Hi guys, welcome to Eight of Cups Tarot and welcome to your astrology for April. So I'm trying to figure out all different ways to make these videos a little bit more um, efficient, time efficient for you, for me, for everybody. Um, so what I decided to do was create kind of an overall astrology video, pre-record it before every video. So that way, if you watch multiple videos, you can kind of just fast forward through that. There'll be timestamps below and within the comment of every reading. So I'll make sure to get the timestamps in. That way you don't have to watch this 12 different times and I don't have to say it 12 different times, which makes me super excited. Um, so really cool stuff for April. I feel like this is a month I've been saying there's going to be a good month. There, I swear in, in all of these, you know, really dense and heavy months we've had for over a year now everything has seemed very heavy and april's gonna come in and it's gonna be like shot out like a cannon okay i'm picking up elements of like that northern hemisphere spring fever kind of stuff now as i'm recording this there's actually stuff going down with the spring breakers in florida and I think that kind of talks about the overall energy for April. You know, everybody gets to be let loose. There's a lot going on with the vaccines. So everybody's feeling a little bit more confident about stepping out socially. Um, it's kind of like a purge. Now we've got so much action from Venus as she's starting this new cycle, which she's doing right now along with this entire last week of March. And she's really gonna culminate with these moons on the Aries Libra axis this month. We're stepping into a lot of cardinal energy and we're bringing back the cardinal squares. It's a little bit of a tense time, but really in a good way. So Venus this month is kind of resetting our values and our priorities, right? But it's much deeper than the wanting. I feel like all year we've all been kind of like having ideas or like, oh, I didn't realize I kind of really do like this thing over here. I would be interested in doing this thing over here. But now it's actually in the way that you feel. So if you're in um, jobs or relationships or any type of situation that isn't really speaking to you, it's going to get uncomfortable now. The universe is going to make you uncomfortable now. Pluto steps in this month and he really wreaks some havoc on our values, on our ambition, on our relationships. And, and he questions, are we in the right place? And he teaches a lot of lessons and he's very intense. So there's all this flirty, fun energy. There's a lot of possibilities to meet some really profound people in our lives this month. Um, we're working intensely with the notes, so it's a very karmic month as well. And we have this dance all in the same sign. These planets are so active and there's so many aspects and yet nothing that's, you know, super heavy. Like I said, there's a lightness, there's a quickness to this month. Things are going to move very quickly. So going through the month, we're starting out with the Venus sextile Mars, which is going to give you that feeling like you're ready to get back out in the world you know there's something that's very confident and very sexy sexy about this venus sextiling mars it's very flirty it's very communicative it's very expressive and it's very courageous if you are looking to date um, or start new relationships it's a really good month for the dating profiles okay towards the end of the month We've got some Sun, Uranus, um, Venus, Uranus aspects coming in, which literally can translate into meeting people over the internet. So it's kind of a good time. And not even just dating, but even if you're getting into like um, specialized groups or groups that kind of hone in on your interests, you could have a lot of luck meeting other people, like-minded people, people that, um, kind of vibe on your level they enjoy your stuff it's kind of almost the resetting of the tribes in a way so expect to meet new people invite that energy into your life now on the ninth we've got mars square neptune and this is a little bit of a hairy part of the month there's 
an element of dishonesty and it could even lead to disappointment you know and this could be where we put some really high expectations on things on people and we get pretty disappointed and it's okay because the thing is we're really learning to be you know independent on our own and not searching for things within others now we have pluto going retrograde at the end of the month so all month long all all planets are moving forward full steam ahead but when pluto hits that point it means we've got to reset psychologically so you can expect april to bring in the situations that makes us feel the need to self-analyze and this mars square neptune is going to kind of lead up to that self-analyzation you know what are some of your bad habits because in april you're going to want to jump into things so if you're somebody who just kind of jumps into love then you could probably expect some harsher lessons you know people don't turn out to be who they said they would be jobs don't turn out to pay what they said they would pay you know things aren't going to meet your expectation it's also a time where you could slip into some pretty negative thought patterns there could be some paranoia that comes up having an issue trusting people, misjudging situations. There could really honestly just be innocent miscommunications as well. So take a look at that energy. Again, it's going to be things that later on in the month you're going to really want to look at. Why do I do this thing? You know, if you're somebody like, for example, um, you're dating and you tend to ghost people, you know, obviously it's because there's something within you that makes you feel like you can't communicate your feelings. So you might be in a situation where you ghost somebody or somebody ghosts you and you really have to look into why these situations are a recurring pattern in your life. Just, you know, a random example. That's how that energy will play out. So then we roll into the 10th and we've got Venus sextile Jupiter. And this is like the sexiest, one of the sexiest days of the year. Um, if there is an opportunity to go on vacation, go out of town for the weekend with your partner or your friends, like do it now. It could definitely talk about overindulgence. So, you know, if you've been working really hard at paying down debt, you know, this will be kind of the weekend where you're like, well, screw it. Let's fly to Florida for the weekend and, and you know, really rack up those bills again. So you want to be careful of that. You want to be careful of any kind of overindulgence, especially because we're still in that energy of Mars square Neptune. So um, careful about the people that you meet. Don't trust people that you don't know, okay? Um, kind of look out for your drinks, keep yourself safe. Um, again, it feels sexy, it looks good, there's like a serious attraction you know, and yet it could disappoint us in the end. So just remember to love yourself and make good, safe decisions. Um, we're rolling into the new moon now, mid-month, 22 degrees Aries. This is on the world point. I expect this to be kind of one of the bigger moons that plays out collectively. You're going to see a lot of action collectively as well. Probably not huge, mind-blowing events, although the moons can bring that in. Um, but like a lot of fast information situations changing the story changing like this is true no that is true remember we're in gemini energy so most likely both sides of the story are kind of true if you recall back in um last may venus was traveling through gemini and she went retrograde and i remember thinking to myself when we're in Gemini energy, which I have a hard time with because I'm all earth and water, so the air energies are a little bit tricky for me. So I always try to remember the Tao at that time, you know, like everything's about being balanced. Try not to feel too much, try not to get too invested, stay in the middle and remain calm. And, and so as this year rolled on, the nodes are in Gemini, now Mars is in Gemini, it's meeting the North Node definitely a good time to keep that information in mind it's always best you know you know what's best separate from self protect your energy when you have to and trust your gut trust your instinct you know um this is this new moon in aries is all about trusting our instincts trusting you know even when we're in bad situations bad relationships we're in bad jobs you know 
some people tend to stay in that discomfort for a long time. That discomfort becomes their comfort. Anything that's familiar, we can get stuck in. Now, March had a lot of trine energy, and sometimes I think about the trine as where we build ruts. Well, we follow the path of least resistance, and the path of least resistance is just doing the same thing I always do. If I can avoid change and everything stays the same, then I don't have to deal with the drama. Okay, great, but then if you're not particularly happy with your life, you actually have to take action to change it. So March was kind of like the, oh, here's your ruts, here's where you're stuck. And April comes in and it throws a bunch of sextiles, a bunch of squares at us all month long. Boom, 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 every day. And it's like opportunity, something that needs to be broken through. Opportunity, breakthrough. Opportunity, breakthrough. And if you look at every situation that comes up this month as, okay, I'm not going to take it too hard on myself. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to beat myself up over this. I learned from it and move forward. If you're honest, if you communicate, you could probably skate through this month and really enjoy some of the nice opportunistic stuff that comes your way. If you get stuck in the rut, if you put your feet, you know, if you if you really dig your feet in and refuse to learn the lesson or, you know, if you get an energy of refusing to say you're sorry or refusing to discuss anything or talk about things, um, again, you're going to stay in that rut. You're going to stay in that rut as long as you want. Again, it's a karmic month, making karmic decisions. There is an element here of the things that you choose in April are pretty long term, especially the end of April. So we're rolling into these new phases. We're rolling into the new us. And ultimately, in this Aries energy, we really know what's best we know at a soul level and by that we start to actually repel some of the things that we may have attracted to ourselves in a lower vibration again if you're dating people or in jobs where you're really unhappy and the energy is toxic what you found tolerable will completely become intolerable like you cannot stay there this universe is making you super, super uncomfortable. Now, middle of the month, we roll into some Pluto energy. We've got Venus square Pluto, then the Sun square Pluto, and then Mercury square Pluto. Okay, a lot of energy into the transformation. Now, Pluto's still hanging out at the end of Capricorn. We've been going through this for a couple years. This is stuff that's lingering from 2020. It's things about the structures in our lives that need to change and the sun mercury and venus all making the square the pluto are going to make them really apparent okay this is the ruts or this is why you stay in the ruts you know if there are issues like self-worth issues obsessive thinking issues you know and pluto can bring about like some pretty intense and fatal attractions as well. You know, um, especially Venus square Pluto, I, I always call my fatal attraction. You know, it can really point to how you are as in even with finances, those bad habits, those mistakes you keep making, you know, think about Capricorn, you think about Pluto, and I think the devil card. And it's like those things that call to us, that thing that says, yeah, but, you know, you could just buy one more shopping spree or have one more bottle of wine or, you know, one more night out. And, and it's always that voice that whispers, go ahead, you could do one more time, one more time. And it's really an area of ourselves psychologically that's holding ourselves stuck in these patterns. We have to start looking at them and we have to start changing them. We have to start acknowledging them. At the same time, we've got Venus making connection with Chiron. So we're in this super healing energy. The things that you figure out, the things that bubble to the surface, the underlying control issues within your life, 
A lot of things can have control over us. It doesn't necessarily have to be people. You know, it could be an abusive relationship. It could be a, um, you know, a sexual relationship that you stay in, even though it's really not meeting any of your emotional needs. Um, it, it's where you sell yourself short and you get stuck in the bad habits and, and you think too little of yourself to make the big changes so that your life can actually improve. There's no doubt we're going to be moving towards the better things, the healthier choices. So right now, the universe is going to point out all of the negative habits that we have. We have got to meet them head on. And again, a reminder that Venus in Aries is going to say, this time I'm going to value myself. So maybe you made decisions in the past where you kind of didn't stand up for yourself or you didn't want to create a confrontation. You know, Aries, Venus and Aries, no, there'll be a confrontation, no problem. It, it could even get really explosive. I'm going to tell everybody, watch your tempers mid-month. Watch the way that you talk to people. Watch the things that you say. This energy can kind of make you say things you really will regret, like the things that you can't take back. Um, yeah, it's, it's an intense part of the month. It's not, it can also be really intense in a good way. If you are meeting somebody new in the middle of the month, please be careful, okay? Again, we're still in that Mars square Neptune. We've got the nodes squaring Neptune. You got to trust your gut instincts, not other people, okay? Um, you could honestly meet people that are very powerful or kind of use their power negatively people that are very manipulative people that could um, hurt you financially um, hurt you sexually so you just want to be aware of those situations you could meet somebody there could be a really intense attraction um, and then it could turn out to be you know like a crazy lifetime movie so just be careful of that energy uh, moving on into the middle of the month, we've got the Sun conjunct Mercury at 29 degrees. Um, this gets really interesting. Um, not usually a big deal. The Sun makes a Kazemi with Mercury multiple times a year. They travel very close. It's the degree that I find particularly um, unsteady. So at 29 degrees aries is or was for example in america the day that the uh, capital was breached it has that explosive bubbling up energy and because it's so close to all of this pluto energy you want to be careful of your surroundings okay this could be some kind of out of control anger rebellion kind of thing that we've got going on and that starts around the 20th and it moves through the end of the month. So, um, yeah, you probably expect some sort of civil unrest. You could probably expect some kind of, you know, protesting. Uh, be careful in your neighborhoods. Just be careful of your surroundings. Um, Sun conjunct Mercury at 29 degrees Aries also, you know, in our personal lives is a great opportunity for you to really stand up for yourself. So if you're in negative relationships, in abusive partnerships, in jobs that take advantage of you, you're gonna have the strength to say it. You're gonna have the strength to change your environment here. So take advantage. This is just a starting point. We've got Venus conjunct Uranus, which brings sudden changes um, in you know relationships and money. Now, this is kind of uh, one of the times that Venus met Uranus in the sky was when that Robin Hood thing happened. So you could kind of expect something else like that. Now, it might just be a continuation of that story. We get a little bit more or something more happens in the stock market, but usually it's something um, collectively within the economy or, you know, finances. So Venus conjunct Uranus in our personal lives is, you know, meeting somebody out of the blue. Um, breaking up relationships you know it, it's sudden events like that you can't possibly predict like a house catching on fire or you know car accident so and and i don't say that to scare anybody but these are things that happen in our lives that in a 
split moment can change everything. And I think we're dealing with a lot of big decisions. And it's like that split moment when you make that decision that changes everything. It doesn't have to be scary. Sometimes Uranus brings some very positive developments. You know, it could also represent with the Pluto energy um, transformation instantly with money. So, you know, luck gambling, winning the lottery, you know, things that transform your life forever. Um, so then at the end of the month, we have Venus square Saturn, and this can carry an element of isolation and loneliness. I am kind of leery of something happening where we kind of have to shut back down. Um, I don't see it being a long stint, but there might be a pullback of energy. Now, the Venus square Saturn is the pulling back. So if you've had a crazy April, you went on vacation, you spent a lot of money, you bought new clothes because God knows we've all been like in our sweatpants for a year. So it's kind of exciting to go out and buy new clothes, right? And have plans and go and see people, meet people and date, like that's fun. And then like the credit card bill comes <laughs> in the, on the 25th, 26th with that full moon, seven degrees Scorpio, again, another financial placement, another world point ironically. Again, more financial developments, of course. Venus is going to move, you know, her way into some pretty crazy transits in the next few months. So you can expect stuff with the economy to really be um, unstable. Remember, if you want to keep a leg up on things, get some money in savings. Um, be careful with your money. Be careful with your investments. I know it's fun and we all deserve to have a good time this month, but there is always consequences. And when Pluto goes retrograde at the end of the month, like I said, that's a credit card bill. That's the consequences. So you can expect that to come in. And then there's like the reconciling with that full moon. In Scorpio, it's intense and it's deeply rooted. And whenever we have moons coming up in any of the fixed signs, Leo, Aquarius, Taurus, or Scorpio, you can expect some more big changes. This is the element. Um, again, everything was in Aquarius when the capital was breached and that kind of changed everything forever. So guys, we're in such an element of change. It's really important for me to point out, I know a lot of us are like, all right, I'm ready. I'm, I'm really ready for life to take off. I'm ready for these things to happen. And I think it's really important to understand that there's like not a lot you can do right now. Pluto's making all of these squares. You really don't have control. The universe has control. It's, it's really, you know, if you've been manifesting, if you've been doing the work, this is where you're like, all right, I have faith the universe is going to bring it in. You know, the Hierophant card, Taurus card, and you have faith and it works. But if you've got a lot of deep-rooted doubts, self-worth, value issues, lessons that you have to learn, guys, we're not in an element of settling. Uranus will not let us settle for any of the things that we settled for in the past. We're changing and we have to allow the changes to come in. So it's a really beautiful month, guys. It's super exciting. Um, just be careful and take care of you, most important this month. Know your surroundings and take care of yourself. All right, guys, let's get started on the cards. Hi Leo, welcome to Eight of Cups Tarot. Welcome to your cards for April. So specifically for you guys, uh, there's a lot of things that can happen kind of in the mental space this month. Um, get a lot of things that are kind of building within and because the North Node and Mars come together in Gemini in your 11th house, there's going to be a real drive for expansion for Leo in some way, in some form. There's a drive to expand your life, expand your family, 
Um, this could play out in a lot of different ways. And what I like about these transits is that your energy is coming up as king of water. Now, when we're in this kind of a mode and we're really considering how we're going to change our lives, right? You know, we've got some pretty big transits that are becoming up in your 10th house. So I think April is kind of a culmination. The beginning of April will feel like a buildup and towards the middle to end, um, there's a lot of 10th house stuff getting lit up, meaning your destiny, your place in the world is changing. And I think you're in the recreation phase. And as you are creating, it is extremely important to tap into that more emotional place. Now, the king of water is very emotionally intelligent, and, and we're going to need that energy. You're going to need that energy to kind of understand the greater story that the last couple of years has framed for you. All of the other experiences that have you, led you to this point there's a certain perspective where you are kind of grateful for them yet you're not weighed down by them because the king of water is weightless because he operates within those realms so clearly he has mastered them so the emotions don't hold him down. The memories no longer hold him down. He always ascends or seeks growth. It's weird because I've been kind of drawn to all of these Ram Das um, kind of Baki yoga studies that I've just been pouring myself into. And a lot of that kind of deals with the idea of suffering and I feel that it's very relevant for the collective. I feel like it's very relevant for all of us right now to understand what a blessing there was in the suffering. And when you're coming from a king of cups place, this level of emotional and spiritual development and mastery you make really good decisions and you integrate the emotions, the intuition. There's a lot of surety and peace that comes with this energy. And I feel like you're coming from the experience of peace as well as knowing what the chaos was like. Okay, because it takes the chaos for us to appreciate the peace. I mean, how long do we all go through life, you know, in our younger years and we're like, I can't wait to do this. I can't wait to do that. I can't wait. And then you reach this point in your adult life where you're like, I just kind of wish everything would slow down. I wish I had more time for me. I wish I would have done this when I was younger. And the odd thing is, if you have a healthy relationship with time, you start to actually lose those boundaries. Those what ifs become possibilities. And you've got some pretty hefty success, ninth house transits. So you could start to change your opinion about the possibilities. If you could tap into the energy of knowing that it is all possible, then you probably wouldn't be in the situation you're coming out of. Now I'm talking about a situation in terms of this Ten of Wands. Ten of Wands is definitely a fiery climax. It's definitely clarity in wanting to go in a certain direction. It typically means a culmination or an ending of something in probably a fiery or passionate way, probably a point in time in which you let the passion kind of take over. Now I say that because just underneath this Ten of Swords is this Ace of Pentacles. Okay, so I feel like this Ten of Wands is kind of this exhaustion that occurs from all of the chaos. This could be an array of unhealthy relationships. This could be 
feeling unsettled. I feel like there is a emptiness or a void kind of root chakra type of thing, not knowing where you belong, not feeling right where you were. And I think right now, deep down in your heart, somewhere within you, all that you truly desire is a little piece, just a solid foundation. So we have this Ten of Wands and then a Four of Wands and a Six of Coins. And I see this Four of Wands and it's always... It's about the dance. And I think it's about the good parts of the things, the good parts of the relationships, the happiness, the celebratory times. And it's kind of the idea or the nostalgia over what something once was, how you got there in the first place, because there seems to be a pretty big contrast between this Four of Wands and the Six of Coins. Four of Wands is kind of like that fantastic date night or that vacation or that amazing honeymoon. You know, and the Six of Coins is kind of like fighting over whose turn is it to get up at 2 a.m. with the baby or walk the dog. And it's kind of the fantasy meets the reality, and this is where you got to make the call. And intuitively, I feel like you are feeling like where you are at now no longer fits who you are. Because the Six of Pentacles is very transactional. Six of Pentacles is the idea that you're carrying burdens. Now, also with the Six of Pentacles and with all of my sixes, there is a form of divinity, meaning that this is an experience that you're meant to have. It's kind of part of your karma, this reincarnation. Maybe you feel as though there's these great and loving relationships in your life, and yet when they are over, you are forced to carry the burden of them. Maybe you feel like you're always getting the short end of the stick somehow, you know. Maybe if this um, is some kind of a, a relationship where, you know, you have responsibilities or children together and one person is kind of lost in their own world, still doing their own things, and the other person feels like they're carrying all the burdens. There's their life has changed more. They've had to give, it, give up more of their time, of their energy. And it's the idea of investment. Now, for some of you, this doesn't have to be a relationship. This could just simply be where you are lost in that part of life. You know, you struggle. You get to points where you put so much work and energy, and that's what that Ten of Wands represents. It's all of the work and the energy that you invest to get to a certain place, this place of expectations. Like, well, once I have my doctorate's degree, or once you know I, I get that corner office or that promotion, or I can move to that state, everything's gonna be okay. And the Four of Wands is that expectation that everything is gonna be okay. Six of Coins is a reality that it's still going to take work. It's not going to be easy. There's going to be obstacles, and it's going to require a lot of your investment. Now, Leo, you have Jupiter and Saturn moving through your seventh. This is all about those karmic relationships and the lessons that you learn from them. Maybe you were the selfish person maybe the other person was investing too much and you just kind of wanted to keep things casual i say that because we have the four of wands and underneath that center of the car center of the reading is this nine of coins and this nine of coins is all about the independence this is not an energy that wants to nor needs to partake in a partnership in any way and ultimately, this is where everybody wants to be. Not 
the idea of being single. Certainly, we are meant to be in relationships. We learn the most valuable lessons in this incarnation on earth when we're in relationships with people. Our connection to people is so incredibly important. But you know that you can survive without, that love is found in so many different places. And when you get to this king of water, nine of coins state, this is a state of kind of being what I like to call unfuckwithable. There's so much emotional intelligence that comes from this mix of the king of water and the nine of coins. This is probably as close to empress as you can get. The nine of coins is very practical and the king of water is very mystical. And you may be tapping into one of those energies in order to strengthen the other. Maybe you're going through some kind of a spiritual enlightenment of some sort or just a heart opening. And that which you are experiencing is making you much stronger. I also feel like it's making you kind of question the overall big picture of things. We have this Ace of Coins, the Nine of Coins, and the Three of Cups. And this is really all about the investment. And this is about what do we want next. We're moving into a new phase in our life. We're going to make practical, realistic plans, but those plans need to reflect who we are, our soul. Meaning we have to be in situations in which we can be authentically ourselves in which we can open up our hearts listen saturn jupiter in the seventh house if you are in unhealthy relationships they will end and the more you resist the harder it's going to be the harder the lesson's going to be the lesson is you are not required to be in anything you no longer feel attracted to and I don't mean attraction as in sexually. I think it's more about attraction vibrationally. And I think Leo is starting to feel like all of this six house drudgery that you've been through in the past couple of years, probably recreating your jobs, making your day-to-day -day life and routines harder or less enjoyable in some way and you begin to question you know like what is the quality of life is this all there is are we supposed to work until we can't work anymore is it all about the money is it all about the investments and where's the joy because the three of cups underneath that six of cups it's all about balance now if you are a leo that is obsessed or super focused on career and money and financial status, you probably have some lessons to learn here about the quality of life, about the things that you can do without and what it is really all about. I say that because underneath this Ace of Coins is a Devil card. And the devil card is kind of always that thing that keeps us going back. It keeps us doing the same thing over and over again. And because this is underneath this ace of coins, this is almost like turning down an offer or an idea or not investing in self. This Capricorn energy feels like it feels like honesty. Where are you holding yourself back? And the odd thing is, next to that is the full moon in Virgo. You are good enough. Now, if you're a Leo who's wondering why things don't work out, why you don't meet the right people, 
why you can't do healthy relationships, why you're struggling financially or you have to depend on people for money and therefore you feel trapped, whatever it is, the root of the cause is in the unworthiness. And I think you have to get to the bottom of that in order for you to tap into this beautiful Nine of Coins, King of Water. Now there's a lot of aspects and there's a lot of activity this month and next month. We're rolling right into eclipse season, still going with that Uranus um, Saturn square, which is particularly rough on you guys. And I think that you know, Leo, that there's a path to liberation. And the path to liberation starts with you changing your mind about your worthiness. Now, maybe even on a realistic level, you knew this was the issue all along. You kind of even called yourself out on it because a king of wands, like I said, that emotional intelligence and right under that, we have card number 28, breaking down to a 10, matching that 10 of wands. Frog spirit, clear the clutter. And I think this is the opportunity to get right with yourself spiritually. You know, it's one thing like to process this stuff on a psychological level. It's another thing to feel it emotionally. And this month is a particularly ripe month for you to be able to feel it and process it. It might be a weird situation. It might be a dream that you have. It might be a single conversation. It might be something that feels almost unworldly. And yet there's no denying that when it happens, you feel different. And that unworthiness is the fear, the fear of the not knowing. Full moon in Virgo and that Virgo energy right next to that devil is definitely not having a clear idea of your talents, your value and what you bring to the table. And sometimes we get lost in relationships or karmic patterns where we're with people that make us feel inadequate. Or we get into situations where we know we know all of this stuff and we have this great talent. We have this, you know, Leo, you have a beautiful light that you're meant to shine for everybody. And so to see a Leo that's stuck in a Virgo state of never feeling ready you know, that fear like somebody's going to be like, yeah, but you don't really know what you're talking about or you're completely wrong or you embarrass yourself and therefore you live in kind of this present of what I have is good enough. I could never break out. I could never be better. And I feel as though you're pulling yourself out of the negative, like out of the, you know, the, the negative portion of that. And now you're starting to realize that you do have self-worth and and so we're getting to the bottom of the things. This is like the clutter, meaning you've done so much work. The universe is going to give you opportunities that are going to make it really clear like, oh, wait, we still have to work on this issue. You still have to change your mind about that. And you do need to understand there's a deep deserving. And when you open up to the deserving and the compassion of self, you can change the dynamics. Now, this is what gets really interesting is that the, we've got this four of wands, this nine of coins, and underneath that we have this king of, wand, king of wands. Now, a lot of super masculine making it happen energy this month. Not saying that this is, you know, particularly a man or a woman energy. It's just masculine in the way that these things are actually causing you to take action on things in your life. The feminine energy and the nine of coins is kind of this assurity that things will come to you because you are of a high vibration, high vibration, because you are of high quality, because you realize your quality, you attract high quality to you. But there's another side of you that's coming out that's very action oriented, meaning that 
once you see or understand or feel the change, you can process in another direction. Your ambition and your drive is strong. And your ambition is moving towards that of independence and self-stability. The idea that you are going to follow a dream unapologetically. Now the thing is, that thing might mean that you have to leave some stuff behind. Last card out. The Tower card, directly under this Three of Cups. It's the Reckoning. Sometimes things get built up like a bottle, you know, like soda in a bottle, you shake it up and uh, open it up and you can make quite a mess. And there's something about you bottling stuff up for so long that when you finally release it, it can make a little bit of a mess. It could disturb your day-to-day -day processes. It could disturb your life. You could really throw things up in the air. You might find yourself right back in that chaotic place that you swore you would never go again. But the thing is, North Node in Gemini, and particularly in your 11th house of expansion, sometimes things are meant to explode. Sometimes revelations are this big. There's liberation with that tower card. There's liberation from something that has been weighing you down for probably as long as you can remember. And I feel like it has something to do with other people's expectations as well all the things that you should do, all the things you're told to do. Tower card by the book, card number 11. There's a path that you're supposed to follow. There is an example in front of you that you are supposed to, you know, heed this call. Like we have this by the book and then we have the judgment card. Underneath, the, right next to the tower, we have sanctuary. I want to read this. A sanctuary resides inside you no matter what is happening. This inner temple beckons you to enter. Take a deep breath, enter, and sit down on the throne of your own heart. See, the explosion that happens within you is your authentic self. That version of you that you've kept bottled up because people said it wasn't okay. There's a judgment call that you can't be that person that other people expect you to be all the time. And I think that King of Water is just a perfect remedy for the shame or guilt that you probably carry, which causes a resistance for you to make the changes in your life. Now, the world card in reverse suggests that something is definitely ending. The cycle is over. And underneath that is this Queen of Wands. There's a King of Wands and there's a Queen of Wands, which tells me that you are really getting pulled down a path that you are meant to go down. And I, I want to say it was Taurus that had the same energy at the end they were kind of pulling away from one situation or one relationship 
maybe even feeling like it was the end of the world or they were going to be alone forever. But, you know, I think quickly it leads you down a different path. And now it doesn't have to be another relationship. This could just be like the path of what you're meant to experience. And Eight of Wands, you can expect things to move very quickly. Life is picking up and you're going to see 2021, 2022, 2023, things move really quickly. Big changes happen suddenly. And we're coming into next month when that Uranus in Taurus starts to get really activated. Still making a square. So all of these planets together with Uranus are making that square to um, Saturn and Jupiter. This is definitely a loosening up. And I think the environment is ripe for you to stop doing all the things by the book. And I also feel like with this card in particular that there might be um, an example or a person in your life who is either inspiring you or leading you down a path. Maybe it's somebody you had a, a conversation or you struck up a friendship that has gone through a similar situation than you. And I think you're able to gain a lot of insight and it could be negative or positive. It's probably different for everybody, but maybe somebody had the same thing in front of them and they chose to stay in a relationship and you could learn from that lesson, you know? Um, but yeah, this feels as though there's definitely a path that you're meant to go down. And this month, it's all about finding the courage to choose you, to choose the things that you dream of, to make those things a priority even if you have to disappoint people around you, there's things that you're meant to do. And I don't think that anyone will be able to hold you down or hold you back from those things as soon as you get over the idea of you not being worthy of it. Once you get that, whatever you want is truly yours, Leo. It's a really powerful reading and a super powerful month for you guys. I really hope that it's wonderful. I hope you guys all have a wonderful Easter. Spend some time with your family. Enjoy the holidays. Do me a favor and turn off the news for a little while. I know this year especially, we're all going to get kind of worked up. There's, there's fears being activated entirely through the collective. We're being asked to maintain and discipline our thoughts. So it's a really good time to get lost in more inspirational um, positive thinking affirmation type stuff taking a step back from the negative news that we see and we're overexposed to every day make your mental health and your emotional health a priority Leo especially for you guys you guys are going to have a big year all right lots of love take care guys I'll see you soon bye